Hello everyone, welcome to Freedom Fighter 2127. Last time we left off with doing a, uh, a prayer video, at least for me, um, we were in, in the book of Daniel. What I have an idea of is I'm going to create a playlist for each book of the Bible that we go through. We've gone through Ephesians, we've gone through Psalms, um, those are the only two we've gone through so far because Psalms is quite, quite a longer book. Um, so, that being said, I'm going to try and create a playlist for Ephesians, and I'm going to try and create a playlist so far for Daniel, and then the next book, so on and so forth. You get the point? All right, let's continue. Nebuchadnezzar, the king made an image of gold, whose height was three score cubits, and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, the governors, and captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then an herald cried out, to you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spake and said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto him, unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up. Now if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a, uh, of a burning fiery furnace, and whose who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. And these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandments, commandment was urgent, the furnace exceeding hot, the flames of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake 
and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, being, being gathered together, saw these men, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word, and yielded their bodies, that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sword. And the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Daniel 4 Nebuchadnezzar, the king unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, Peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to shew the signs and wonders that the high God hath wrought toward me. How great are his signs, and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in mine house, and flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of me at my head had troubled me. Therefore I made a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. Then came in the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers, and I told the dream before them, but they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But at the last Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belshazzar, according to the name of my God, <clears throat> and in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And before him I told the dream, saying, O Belshazzar, Master of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee, and no secret troubleth thee. Tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen, and the interpretation thereof. Thus were the visions of mine head in my bed. I saw and behold a tree in the midst of the earth, and the eight thereof, and the height thereof was great. That tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto heaven, and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. The leaves thereof were fair and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all. The beasts of the field had shadow under it, and the fowls of the heaven dwelt in the bows thereof, and all flesh was fed of it. I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and an holy one came down from heaven. He cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree and cut off his branches, Shake off his leaves and scatter his fruit. Let the beasts, beasts get away from under it, and the fowls from his branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the yield, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven. And let his portion be with the beasts in the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from man's, and let a beast's heart be given unto him, and let seven times pass over him. This matter is, my, is by the decree of the watchers, and the demand by the word of the holy ones, to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will, and setteth up over it the bassest of men. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now thou, O Belshazzar, declare the interpretation thereof. For as much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation, but thou art able, for the spirit of the holy gods is in thee. Then, then Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, was astonied for one hour, and his thoughts troubled him. The king spake and said, Belshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belshazzar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee, and the interpretation thereof to thine enemies. The tree that thou sawest, which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto the heaven, and the sight thereof to all the earth, whose leaves were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and upon whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation. It is thou, O king, that art grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown, and reacheth unto heaven, and thy dominion to the end of the earth. And whereas the king saw a watcher and an holy one coming down from heaven, and saying, Hew the tree down, and destroy it, 
yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass, and the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let this portion be with the beasts of the field, till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my lord the king, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the earth of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee, till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee. After that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness, and thine iniquities by shewing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of twelve months he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power, and for the honor of my majesty? While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven, saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee, and they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men, and did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hairs were grown like eagles' feathers, and his nails like birds' claws. And at the end of the days I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me, and I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven, and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand, or say unto him, What doest thou? At the same time my reason returned unto me, and for the glory of my kingdom, mine honor and brightness returned unto me, and my counselors and my lords sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, all whose works are truth, and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride he is able to abase. Let's pray. This is from demonbusters.com. I will leave the link in the description box as well as a, uh, most of the prayers so that way you guys can go and find it. This is putting on the armor of God, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 18. I have read this one previously. It has been a while. Uh, for It's been a while since I've read it online on YouTube, so I figured I might as well go ahead and read it. I place around my waist the belt of truth. We will know the truth, and the truth will make us free. We are free because whoever the sun sets free is free indeed. We are free from, pause and say whatever you have been set free from, the bonds of sin and death, addiction. We are a son or daughter of God. The Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. He will guide us with his eyes. We have the wisdom and knowledge of God. The Holy Spirit will instruct us in the way we should go. We put on the breastplate of righteousness. Because of the cross, Jesus has placed on us a robe of righteousness. We are the righteousness of God. We pour the blood of Jesus over ourselves this day. Forgive us of our sins this day. Convict us, Holy Spirit, of any wrong, and search our hearts of any secret sins. The righteous are as bold as a lion. We thank you for boldness to do your will today. Help us to speak your word with great boldness. We are established today in your righteousness. Our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Help us to be prepared to give the, our testimonies today. We thank you that you have made a covenant with us, that your laws and your words are written on our hearts and in our minds. You said that you put your words in our mouths. Let our lives reflect the gospel of peace. Send someone across our path. 
to share that gospel with today. Use us, Lord, to bless someone today. We take up the shield of faith, which quenches every fiery dart of the enemy. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. We are an overcomer through you, in you. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We thank you for our angels. We have an angel of the Lord that encamps around about us. We are protected from the evil one and delivered from the evils of this present world. We place on our heads the helmet of salvation, the hope of glory. We have the mind of Christ and no weapon formed against our minds will prosper. We think on things which are good, pure, perfect, lovely, and of good report. We will take authority over our minds today. We have authority over all the power of the enemy. We choose to cast down every vain imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And we will bring them into captivity, to the obedience of Christ. We belong to Jesus, and we give the Holy Spirit control of our thoughts. We submit our minds to God, resist the devil, and he must flee. We take the sword of the Spirit and we use it on the offense. We will not shrink back. We are a soldier for Christ, soldiers for Christ. We wrestle against principalities. We thank you for the power of your word. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It will not return void, but it accomplishes the task it was sent for. Your word is true. You are not a man that you would lie. We are doers of your word. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We will hide your word in, in, our, in our hearts so that we will not sin against you. We will pray in the Spirit on all occasions because the Spirit will pray through us the will of God. This builds up our inner man or woman and gives us strength for the day. We will pray for the saints according to your word. We add this to our prayer in addition to the armor of God. We thank you that the glory of the Lord is our rear guard. We will praise you this day. Let the high praises of God be in our mouths and a two-edged sword in our hands. We will praise you because you are worthy of our praise. We place on ourselves a garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. Put a new song in our hearts, Lord. Let your, let your praise be continually on our lips. We thank you, Lord, that you are a God of healing, provision, and restoration. You are our healer. It is the will of God for us to be healed. You took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. You said you heal all thy diseases. You are our provider. Those who seek you will not lack any good thing. You will prosper us as our soul, souls prosper. As we seek you first, we will, and you will add all things to us. All of our needs are met in Jesus. You have made a covenant with us that as we tithe and give an offering, that you will supply all of our needs and we will reap abundantly. You are the God of restoration. As we plead with you and walk pure and upright, you will rouse yourself on our behalves and restore us to our rightful place. You will restore what the cranker worm has eaten up. You restore our souls. We thank you, Lord, that we walk in the fruit of your Spirit. It is not by might, not by power, but by your Spirit, says the Lord. We have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This is our personality in you. We ask you for the gifts of the Spirit. Your word says to seek these gifts. We want to edify others through these gifts. We ask you for the message of wisdom, the message of knowledge, the gifts of faith, the gift of healing, miraculous powers, the gift of prophecy, discerning of spirits, speaking in different kinds of tongues and the interpretation of tongues. Help us to encourage someone today through the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray all these in your holy name, Jesus. Your name is above every name. All things are placed under your feet. All authority has been given unto you in heaven and in earth. In him we live, in him we move, and in him we have our being. You are Lord. Amen. I want to add one thing. I would like you guys to take a minute and seriously pray for people around you. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Pray for your Christian brothers and sisters. Pray that deliverance comes to the forefront of, of the church, of Christianity. Pray that men everywhere put God first. I want to thank you all for watching. Please check out the websites freedomfighterreports.com and socialexodus.net. God bless and carry on.